Ditch those clowns and jokers. Join me in the middle with your independent minds. All you've got to do is click the subscribe button and ring that little bell, and you'll then get the most independent presentations on all of YouTube. Thanks for watching. Bill Cosby is a free man. I've been paying close attention to this case for more than a decade. As a matter of fact, Bill Cosby gave me his only pre-trial interview. It was a radio interview right here on Sirius XM on the POTUS channel. It was before the first trial, that which ended in a hung jury. And so today is perhaps my uh, last time that I want to weigh in on any aspect of this case. And there, there's an observation or two that I want to share that I, I don't hear other people making. Uh, let me get into it this way. First of all, with regard to his conviction having been overturned, it all comes down to the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment says that no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. And in this case, Cosby was, according to the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is the bottom line, he was enticed to surrender his Fifth Amendment rights. In other words, with the promise that he would not be prosecuted, he was enticed to surrender a Fifth Amendment right that he would have had when given deposition testimony in a civil suit. So having been told by the then DA, Bruce Castor, I'm not going to prosecute you, now, when he's being sued by Andrea Constan, and when he's giving deposition testimony, sworn deposition testimony, he can't assert a Fifth Amendment right. He has to answer her lawyer's questions. And indeed, he was deposed on four different occasions. And when he sought not to answer questions about his interactions with her, her lawyers were able to go to court and compel him to answer those questions. So he couldn't assert a Fifth Amendment right that he otherwise would have had. Um, by the way, the net impact is that he answered her lawyer's questions, did so in a way that was incriminating, which led to a civil suit settlement in which he had to pay in excess of $3 million. So the, the court in this case said, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania said, hey, we are enforcing the agreement that the then DA Bruce Castor made with Bill Cosby, he cannot be prosecuted. And that's why he was released from jail, and that's why he cannot be prosecuted for those facts in any other circumstance. So point number one that you're hearing said by other people in different ways is he was enticed to surrender his Fifth Amendment right. That was a constitutional violation. That's the basis for the overturning of his conviction. The second point is the one that I want to make that I've been observing for a long time and that has always been unsettling to me. Don't misunderstand anything that I'm saying. I'm not here to carry the water or defend in any way Bill Cosby. I'm here to explain some of the legal issues, uh, including this one that I think that others have missed. So let me try and lay that out. Okay, so Cosby wasn't being prosecuted. He was being sued by Andrea Konstad. He gave incriminating testimony that enabled her to obtain a civil settlement that she otherwise perhaps would not have had or would have not have had for that kind of money. But that sworn testimony then sat for nearly a decade until it was unsealed, a temporary sealing was unsealed by a federal judge. And this is a subject about which I wrote a 2015 Philadelphia newspaper column. Was it the Inquirer or the, the Daily News? I'm not even sure which newspaper it appeared in. Um, but I made the observation that the judge was determining that the basis for his unsealing of this otherwise sealed testimony that Cosby had given, which was incriminating, is that he thought Bill Cosby was a hypocrite. I don't think he used that word. What he did say was that Cosby had donned the mantle of public moralist. In other words, the judge said, hey, Bill Cosby, you're out there telling other people how to lead their lives, especially African-Americans. And the judge cited several instances. 
Well, I'm going to give them a little glimpse into how you're leading your life. And that logic, although he cited case law, always struck me as being baseless. In other words, Cosby was being held accountable for his public platform in a way that would not have applied to an accountant or an architect or a mechanic. He singled Cosby out because of what Cosby was saying outside of the parameters of this case. As I wrote in my column at the time, there was actually a footnote in the 25-page legal opinion, the federal judge, a George Herbert Walker Bush appointee by the name of Eduardo Rebreno. And here's what I wrote in my newspaper column at the time. Citing precedent, Rebreno concluded that Cosby had, quote, thrust himself into the vortex of these public issues and had voluntarily narrowed the zone of privacy that he's entitled to claim. As a result, the judge who was appointed by President George H.W. Bush lifted a temporary seal he had entered 10 years ago that had kept discovery motions and their supporting documents from public view. And then further along in the column, I say, listed in a footnote of Rebreno's opinion were examples of Cosby's quote-unquote duality. The so-called pound cake speech that he delivered in 2004 at the 50th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education, a 2013 interview that he did with CNN's Don Lemon, and impromptu remarks that he made to Temple grads during their 2014 commencement. Well, let me give you a taste. Here's a piece of the so-called pound cake speech delivered by Bill Cosby. I'm talking about these people who cry when their son is standing there in an orange suit. Where were you when he was two? Where were you when he was 12? Where were you when he was 18? And how come you don't know he had a pistol? These are not, these, these are not political criminals. These are people going around stealing Coca-Cola. People getting shot in the back of the head over a piece of pound cake. And then we all run out and we're outraged. Oh, the cop shouldn't have shot him. The hell was he doing with the pound cake in his hand? So as a result of that speech and two other instances, what the judge said the federal judge, when faced with the decision of unsealing Cosby's sworn testimony, the judge said, quote, the stark contrast between Bill Cosby, the public moralist, and Bill Cosby, the subject of serious allegations concerning improper and perhaps criminal conduct, is a matter as to which the AP, the Associated Press, and by extension the public, has a significant interest. So the judge said, hey, Bill Cosby, you're out there telling other people how to lead their lives. You're critical of some of the parenting in the African-American community. Guess what? I'm going to allow people to see how you've been leading your life. I wrote about that subject. I questioned whether that logic was appropriate, whether it was grounded. And I think that's probably why, because I had no pre-existing relationship with Bill Cosby, nor do I now. I think that's why I was contacted by his spokesman and offered the opportunity to interview Bill Cosby before his first trial. Indeed, that interview took place May 15 of 2017, and in the interview, I asked him about the legal opinion that unsealed his deposition testimony based on the logic that he had a platform that he was abusing as a public moralist and when I raised that subject with Cosby, we had the following exchange. A federal judge said, I'm paraphrasing, if Bill Cosby is going to be out there on his soapbox speaking about moral virtue, then it's fair for this deposition to be used against him. From a legal standpoint, I thought that was a wrong decision, and I, I said so at the time. Do you want to comment on that underlying decision which played a pretty significant role in the position in which you find yourself? I have an emotion about what the judge did, and I, I'm still very much confused about how that 
came about. In other words, you you thought you had a deal. That case was over, and the facts of it were done. No. <laughs> it's it's the way it was put out and the way many people saw it and you just said it and i think uh, i think the safest way to put it is uh, i agree with you So that was Bill Cosby with me on POTUS May 15 of 2017, responding to the decision by the federal court judge that unsealed the deposition transcript. Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is that if the federal judge, based on logic that I question, if the federal judge had never released that deposition testimony, the public, the prosecutors would have been none the wiser as to what Cosby said under oath, and he would not have been prosecuted. So again, not defensive of Cosby, but just analyzing the legal issues here. The state Supreme Court, Pennsylvania, said Bruce Castor, the then DA, committed the Commonwealth to not prosecuting Bill Cosby, and they upheld that pledge that Castor made many years ago. That's one observation. The second observation, though, is mine, which is to say, even even if, if all that is true, if the federal judge had never released the deposition transcript based on the criticism of Cosby that he's a public moralist, the prosecution could never have taken place. That's how I see the Cosby case. Um, It's been a long, long process. I A final comment that I'll make is that I've heard a number of people say that uh, he was released on a on a technicality. I don't buy into that logic. Erwin Shemerinsky is the the dean of the UC Berkeley Law School who wrote about this decision for the LA Times uh, under the headline "The Pennsylvania Court Got It Right in Overturning Bill Cosby's Conviction," and I thought that his line at the end was very appropriate. There is a cost to having a constitution that protects the guilty as well as the innocent. But it is the only way that all of our rights can be secured from abuses by government. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribing and share this with a friend.